Well, hello and uh, welcome to Scotland Thousands Partnership uh, Tea Party and Annual General Meeting. I'm delighted to welcome you along and delighted to see such a huge attendance. Uh, my name is Peter Duncan. I'm a director of Message Matters, one of the partners of um, Scotland's Towns Partnership, and it's my pleasure to be chairing <clears throat> the event this afternoon. Obviously, it's been held in unique circumstances uh, this year after the COVID-19 outbreak, which has meant that we've had to move the event online, and I'm delighted that so many people have been able to join us today um, for our uh, event. Um, there's been a fantastic turnout uh, from every single corner of Scotland. That's delight, delightful to see. <clears throat> I'm also delighted to welcome our key contributors this afternoon. Um, Aileen Campbell, MSP, who's the Cabinet Secretary for Communities and Local Government. Um, the Chair of Scotland's Towns Partnership, Professor Lee Sparks. Um, and Phil Prentice, the Chief Officer of STP and also National Director of Scotland's Improvement Districts. Um, I, I started my life in, as it happens, in small town retail as ma managing director of my, firm, my family's fifth generation retail business. And I understand the challenges faced by towns. And, uh, and I'm looking forward to hearing from the panelists today on the future for these cornerstones of our society, our local uh, towns and community centres. But I'm delighted also to welcome you, whatever you are, and hope that you'll enjoy the event. This is your tea party. I hope you have a cup of hand or even perhaps something a bit stronger. So if, if we have perhaps look at the agenda um, for uh, today's event, the uh, circumstances have prevented us from providing you with the traditional fare for the tea party, um, but we thought we'd make up for it with a big picture of some great sandwiches and cakes. Um, but if that's no uh, consolation for you, we'll shortly move on to the formal part of the event, then the annual general meeting, chaired by Professor Sparks um, in his capacity as chairman of the board. After the AGM concludes, <clears throat> we're delighted that the Cabinet Secretary has been able to join us and she'll provide an update from her perspective, the very challenging environment in which Scotland's towns find themselves and so hopefully some insight into the role that the Scottish Government are playing in leading the, the response to the crisis. Uh, Phil Prentice will then provide some background on the work of STP so far, including through Scotland's improvement districts, and no doubt he'll touch on some of the excellent work being undertaken in communities and town centres, the length and breadth of the country. And we'll close finally with some closing remarks from, um, from Lee Sparks, uh, one of the country's leading uh, retail experts. And now, if we move on to how you can play your part, it is very much your turn to, <clears throat> to take part. And at the bottom of the screen, um, you'll see a, a Q&A button. You know, we've got a big attendance today, but I hope as many of you as possible will, um, will take part, pose a question as we go through the, the proceedings, and if we can, we'll deal with them during the Q&A function towards the end. And welcome to submit a questions at any time and we've uh, got some good time allocated uh, to get some answers for you. If we can't get through your questions, then we'll do our best to respond um, uh, after the event in, a, in as good a way as we can, uh, given the level of attendance. So, on to the formal part of the agenda. Can I hand over to, uh, to Professor Lee Sparks, um, Chair of Scotland's Town Partnership, to, to, to conduct the exciting part of the day, which is the, the annual general meeting. Lee, over to you. Peter, thank you very much for that. And can I add my, um, my welcome as well to everyone and thank you all for attending today uh, for both the AGM and the Tea Party, clearly. Uh, we're in rather strange and unprecedented times, and we're all getting used to um, virtual meetings. Uh, there are no substitute, however, for the networking um, or indeed the food you saw on the slide earlier that we had last year. And hopefully um, it won't be too long before we are able to back, getting back to physical presence uh, with each other. Um, as Peter said, um, during the AGM process, normally we'd ask for a show of hands bit more difficult uh, in the way we're doing it this time. So if there are any comments and queries, I go through 
the various reports I have to go through, uh, then please email those or contact the Secretariat and we'll try and answer them as soon as we possibly can. I should point out that in terms of AGM business, the finance part of what we're doing uh, is the finances through to the end of the year, March 2019. Um, I have an update then which takes us through primarily to the end of March 2020 in terms of activities and then a very brief statement which will lead into um, the discussion with the Cabinet Secretary and with Phil Prentice around what's happened since March 2020 which is probably the more interesting bit in terms of this afternoon. Um, the first item of AGM business therefore is to consider and approve the financial accounts for the year to end March 31st of March 2019. A copy of the accounts are made available on the website and they will be offered to members um, on, the, on request as well. Um, I need to read out a statement um, from the accountant Soroban and the statement is as follows. That the income for the year to March 31st 2019 was £4,221,496 that includes conference and events income of £8,042, membership fees of £22,368, sponsorship of £32,575, project income of £108,511, and Scottish Government funding of £250,000. Expenditure was £379,229, which resulted in a surplus after task tax of £34,463. The surplus arose primarily due to the delay in recruitment of the project director to the following financial year. Balance sheets reserves were £61,134 at the end of the year. Normally I would seek members approval as I said. If you do have any queries on the accounts, and as I said, they're on the website, you can have further details by request, uh, then please, if you could address those to the Secretariat, um, we will uh, respond to all of those inquiries or queries. The second item uh, that I need to bring to members' attention is the need to seek approval to renew the account in Soroban for uh, the next financial year. Uh, again, we've taken that generally um, as read, but if there are queries or issues around that, then please again pass them through to the Secretariat. The third item I should note is the election of directors. Um, since the last AGM, there's been substantive change in terms of the directorate uh, of STP. Um, and during the period of the year since the last AGM, then John Gibling, Jennifer Wallace and Adrian Watson uh, were moved into the board. Uh, we had four resignations from the board uh, as they moved on to different parts of, of their careers. Lee Brown, Derek Robertson, Martin Valenti and David Wallace. Um, and we decided to run an open competition about board members and invitations um, to board for possible board members to apply to be members of the board. And we have appointed four uh, members very recently and they attended, albeit virtually, the first meeting of the board this morning. And they are Claire Carpenter, Hilary Kidd, Fergus Murray and Alison Turnbull. The fourth area that I need to uh, talk about is to review our progress and then briefly discuss future plans, though I will. Um, I'm pleased to report in terms of the last year, and this is really the year March 2019 to March 2020, uh, we've had another successful year in terms of Scotland's Towns Partnership. Um, the achievements in a relatively short time scale have been fairly impressive. Uh, and I'd like to identify five points, if I may, out of that. You will see most of the detail of this, obviously, on the website as it's developed over the year and subsequently. Um, we've continued to grow the organisation. We now have over 250 strategic members, partners and sponsors. We assisted both Scottish and local government with the delivery of the £50 million Town Centre Boost Fund, as well as delivering a wide range of projects. Uh, and support two various uh, organisations, towns and partners. Uh, 
The web platform hosts all the major town toolkits, assets, case studies and investments. Our CPD workshops which run throughout the year were well received and our conference and events were also well attended and we believe were successful. Scotland's improvement districts thirdly continues to evolve. We have seen the development of further tourism bids and the community improvement district model is gathering strong interest across Scotland and indeed more widely across the UK. Our media campaigns, the cross party group and the various partnerships have all contributed, I think, to strong progress over the year. And finally, SDP exists to try and create clarity, build partnerships, encourage better understanding and to drive innovation around towns. It's not that we wish to do all of that activity. It is that we wish to amplify the great work that goes on in towns. And I'd like to pay tribute to all of the people who are working really hard within the whole towns arena within Scotland over that period. That concludes my statements about the AGM. The report, as I said, looked back in financial terms to 2019 and in general terms in what I've just discussed above to March 2020. We all have to recognise, however, um, that coronavirus, COVID-19, has presented us with an unprecedented challenge and probably the greatest global challenge uh, in memory. Um, through that, STP has shown strong and determined leadership, as have many bids and local communities throughout, uh, throughout Scotland. And I believe that uh, we will continue to provide that drive, that ambition and that change throughout the recovery and renewal period that's ahead of us. I'll say a few more, more personal remarks around that at the end of this process. Uh, but for me, that concludes the AGM part of the meeting. I'll hand it back to Peter, if I may. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Lee. Um, I very much appreciate your work as chairman um, throughout the, the year and for your uh, report. Um, so I'm delighted to, to welcome and delighted she could find a space in a her, in her really busy and challenging diary in these circumstances uh, for the Cabinet Secretary for Communities and Local Government, Aileen Campbell, to join us. Uh, live from the kitchen or the back room, Aileen, one or, one or two other. Um, delighted you could join us. Um, and Minister, over to you. Oh, hi there. Um, I am in my front room, which is not and it's absolutely freezing cold, and I've had to put the heating on in June, which is uh, not what I was expecting. However, it's good to be with you all, and I um, and hope everyone is safe and well, and thank you for the opportunity to to join you uh, for your a AGM and for uh, this this gathering. Um, I think these types of events are, are, are quite good when uh, we have a much kind of full, more full sense of a, a discussion. And so I don't want to say a huge amount, but um, I do want to kind of uh, thank everyone for all the work that they're doing across their communities at the moment. If we hadn't had so many resilient communities across the country, then we wouldn't have had and seen the 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 positive response to the, the pandemic that we've seen across the country. And that's going to stand us in good stead uh, going, going forward. And so we need to make sure that that resilience uh, is, is kept and maintained and uh, supported as, as best we, we can. So um, town centres, as you know, are going to be a, a huge part of the recovery. And we'd already moved fairly quickly to support our business improvement districts. Um, to make sure that they were able to, to cope with the challenging circumstances around them and also to support them given that we knew that they had particular challenges uh, go, going, going forward. Um, but I am um, also clear that bids and other uh, groups that are there supporting our town centres uh, are also going to be critical in the recovery. So we want to make sure that they are as supported as possible. And uh, that's why we we want to announce today that we're uh, going to provide a uh, further resource to business improvement districts and towns uh, to support the good work that's going forward to make sure that those that don't have business improvement districts can also feel that they are able to um, get the support that they require uh, when they don't have that infrastructure around them because if they don't have that infrastructure uh, nine times out of ten they will have good infrastructure there and we'll make sure that we continue to work with you to continue with that resilience, to support that resilience and to work on the good work that's happened uh, to date. So the funding will be made 
available to towns immediately. This will enable funding to be directed to community and development trusts, chambers, town centre partnerships and local authorities, for example, to help with that recovery. Uh, and we want to though, build from the creativity and innovation that we've seen uh, today. And I know that my officials and us more generally have been working very hard with Scotland's Towns Partnership and they've been doing a good job to make sure that they can let us know about that creativity and that energy that we're seeing across the, the country, whether that's through um, some of the online offerings, the digital offerings, whether that's around uh, town centres thinking through about how they can learn to live with this virus because unfortunately we're going to have to learn with this uh, virus for some time to come and it means that we need to think differently about how we cope with that and we want to help support you to do that. Uh, interesting uh, and before uh, this AGM I know my colleague had uh, Fergus Ewan has also been in the chamber updating uh, Parliament on some of the uh, work he is doing to support uh, recovery and tourism. Again that will be very critical for uh, our town uh, centres uh, as well and he's uh, updated uh, Parliament with a proposed uh, time in the middle of July when things can start to uh, begin to move forward and also uh, his intention to set up a, a tourism recovery uh, group to make sure that he's getting the best possible advice to help guide our decisions as we go forward. Um, so that's very much firmly the space that the whole of government is in. How do we not just recover from where we are, but how do we move forward and not just recover, but also renew and reform what we do? And in that space of renewal, we need to think differently, imaginatively, town centres, Scotland's Towns Partnership, all of your work across uh, the country will be critical in that. And that's why um, we've also uh, asked uh, Lee to help contribute to our thinking around social renewal. Uh, and that localism that we've seen in place, that desire to reconnect to our communities, what we need to do to empower our communities further, and how we need to support that endeavour, because what has been shown in bucket loads over the last uh, two or three months has been when communities are asked and when they're supported and when they're given a bit of resource to help that, they can deliver huge, uh, hugely positive outcomes. And uh, we want to, to continue on that trajectory because I think it's a space that we need uh, to be in. So we don't want just want to go back to the way that things had been done in the past. We firmly want to get into that space of renewal uh, and reform and to capture the good stuff that's been happening in amongst the harshness and horribleness of the, the pandemic and, and to move forward uh, in a changed landscape, but albeit one that I think that if we do it together, we can uh, benefit, from, uh, benefit from that partnership and that collaborative uh, working. So, uh, and that will require us in, in government, me, not just to be working on my own, in my own portfolio to do that, that will need to mean that we work across, uh, across government, across portfolios uh, collaboratively. So, uh, we're working very closely with, with Fergus Ewan, we'll be working with Kate Forbes uh, as well, and Fiona Hislop, because it needs a, a whole government approach to this uh, uh, recovery, and we need to make sure that we're uh, identifying where there are uh, areas that we can work together and maximise the impact of what we do. So um, hopefully the the money that we've announced that 1.75 which will 1.7 million to help support towns and bids in that recovery and resilience phase I hope that that will go some way to help support the work that you're doing that creativity that energy but more than that give you the space to able to contribute to our thinking as well we want this to be a dialogue that doesn't just happen once at the AGM, I'm very clear that I want to continue to engage with uh, people and organisations and groups right across the country to build from what's happened, uh, to make sure that we capture the very best of what's happening across the country, uh, to make sure that we work collaboratively, not just between uh, third sector, local groups, towns, businesses and local authorities, but to make sure that in government that we also capture what's good and work across portfolios and not be uh, siloed in our work going forward. So I think there's opportunity in amongst the challenge. Um, we're going to have to learn to live with this virus for some time. There is obvious and clear economic harm that's happening across the country. And so it's going to be tricky and tough and bumpy, but nonetheless, there is a opportunity there too. And we need to work together to grab that. And I'm very clear that our recovery, Scotland's recovery will be very much aligned to the health and success of our towns and we might need to change what we do, but I think if we do it together and make sure that we are uh, open and honest in our discussions, then we can, uh, I think, hopefully move forward in a, in a positive way and 
uh, and support one another. So um, thank you for all that you're doing. Thank you for giving us this chance to, to speak. But I'm, more importantly, I'm looking forward to some of your comments and uh, points that you'd like to make to me and, and questions that you'd like to ask. So thank you. Thank you very much, um, Cabinet Secretary. Lots of um, uh, fascinating detail there, lots for us to consider. Again, another, another little reminder, if you've got any question to, to ask, we've had some come through already. We're delighted that uh, you can take part that way. So if you if you want to click the button at the bottom, the Q&A button, then we'll come to that um, at the end, if we may, Cabinet Secretary. Um, in the meantime, um, can I ask uh, Phil Prentice, uh, who the Chief Officer of STP to, to join us and give his contribution. Uh, Phil, I know this last number of months has been a massive challenge for us all, but Phil's been especially busy in, and there's no better advocate for Scotland's towns. So Phil, over to you. Thanks, Peter. And thanks, Cabinet Secretary, and for everybody for joining us today. Before I start, I'm just going to remind you that I didn't forget that this was a tea party. So this was my obligatory boater sunglasses, and if anybody wants some tea, you're welcome to join me <laughs> shortly. <laughs> hey, okay, so we are at a tea party, albeit in our new and hopefully temporary virtual new world. Uh, we continue to live through this chaos, but I was thinking about this today, coming from Northern Ireland. I was actually born in the year the troubles began, so growing up, uh, what I thought was normal was actually a society navigating through turmoil. Uh, more recently, we've also had the great financial crash, Brexit, climate emergency, and now we've got COVID. I think the important message in all of that history shows us we adopt, we survive, and then we rebuild again. And picking up on some of what Cabinet Secretary has said, I think we've got time to think about this renewal. COVID has shone a light on our society. It's maybe given us some time to think about what's critical and what's not. Before COVID arrived, climate emergency, Brexit, growing inequalities were causing stresses right across the UK. I had a busman's holiday just before this happened across Europe. And I have to say, when I went through France and Belgium, Luxembourg, Holland, went back to Dublin, everything seemed to be reasonably bubbling along. As soon as I set foot back in the UK, you know, there was a different atmosphere. There was a lot of aggression and we weren't getting it right. So think moving forward, we need to think about what a greener, fairer, healthier, more sustainable Scotland should look like. Again, fundamentally, the things that mean the most to us are the things around us, our family, our friends, neighbours, community, the place we call home, our hometown. These are the things that we can support. And in reality, we can nurture and change. Our towns are at the heart of all of this, the connecting infrastructure that brings us all together. So hey, COVID came along. In April, we asked bids to step up to the plate, and they did. I have to say they did. Uh, creating digital and virtual high streets, virtual markets, hyper-local delivery infrastructure, social distancing infrastructure, PPE distribution, support and advice for businesses who were under pressure. So we're in the process now of asking all of those bids to give us that information back, to capture that. And so we were able to report back to government and all of the good stuff that happened, and we can build on that as we move into recovery. So what's next? At STP, fundamentally, we exist to support the work of the government, local government, communities, and to help drive collaboration across a very broad and complex sector. So as we do move gradually into recovery, we will do our best to help coordinate a National Towns Recovery Campaign, backed by Love Local Initiatives, and in partnership with National Print and Broadcast Media, the messaging will be geared towards promoting sustainable behavior change consolidating the recent shift to localism, to be more part of more ambitious push towards community wealth building, and we can expand on the wide array of hyper-local digital and delivery systems that were mainly established through the Bids Resilience Fund. We'll also be working with Scottish Government and the industry to, um, to safely reopen our town and city centres. But at the same time, this is all very operational. We also need to be thinking and trying to inspire what our town centres could and should become in a post-COVID world. We'll link the um, positive initiatives into an overarching campaign. So for example, High Street Heroes is something that we've been thinking about uh, in partnership with Volunteer Scotland, who have mobilized over 75,000 people across the country, also with Keep Scotland Beautiful. And this is really a good way to celebrate the work of individuals and groups right across the country who have gone that extra mile 
when they were needed most. We'll also work with our key charity partner, Young Scott, and we'll bring in Education Scotland, the HE and FE sectors, as well as the wider industry and practitioners to inspire a citizen-led campaign to deliver the Future Towns Design Competition. I think it's critical that we listen to the voices of younger people in terms of helping us rebuild better towns and cities, just to listen to how they're going to engage and help us shape our approach with things like sustainability, transport, housing, digital, culture, learning, health, the wider economy. From an STP angle, we will continue. We've, I have to, to give credit to the team. Uh, when this chaos began, they were able to really adapt quickly. We moved on to a flexible footing. Uh, all of our products are now available online. A lot of our learning is available online, and that's going to continue. We're also going to be developing or continuing to develop a renewed digital version of the Town Toolkit, uh, how to and fit that into the National Place Portal that'll come about later this year. And that's going to look at things. There will be obviously a, a temporary section around COVID-19 for the here and now, but it's been more ambitious in looking about delivery infrastructures, how we actually build sustainability and community wealth into our thinking in a new economy, and just build on the, 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 the active, attractive, accessible work that had already been done. We're going to continue to upgrade and renew the web resources to ensure you've got all the right information as things progress. And again, I have to give credit to the team and the, the stakeholders that we've been working with, the City Bids Forum and others, because the resources that are now sitting both on STP's website and the Improvement District's website are very, very useful and uh, they've been well received right across the industry. But finally, I really want to offer a sincere thank you to the Cabinet Secretary and also her team in the Scottish Government for their continued support and for all of the positivity that they've created around today's event. Our government, their civil servants and colleagues across local government have been inspirational throughout this crisis. They've inspired confidence and provided strong leadership as well as providing critical advice and support the whole way through this. So the announcement of further funding and resources is warmly welcomed. Collectively though, that's a challenge to us as an industry. We need to make this work as hard as possible for our bids, for our towns, large and small, our high streets, our neighbourhood communities, and over the coming months, but beyond that, into renewal and, and, and beyond recovery. So in response to the Resilience Fund, you stepped up to the plate, and I'm asking you guys to do the same again. Um, that's all I'm going to add today. So thank you all, and uh, please enjoy a cup of tea and a piece of cake if you've got one. I'll hand you back to Peter. Thank you. Thank you very much, Phil. Um, enjoy your cup of tea. I suggest you keep the hat, keep the hat off. That would be my suggestion. Um, thank you very much for that, Phil. And I, I mean, I really appreciate. I think everyone joining us, anyone who knows about the work of STP, uh, will understand the level of effort that's gone into the immediate post-COVID response. And I think we'd want to um, certainly express their thanks for everything that you're doing. Um, can I suggest that maybe Lee and, and Phil just join us? Um, we have some questions now to go through. Um, probably most, most of the ones, I think, are directly to the Cabinet Secretary, but just in case either Lee or Phil, um, uh, if there's anything they want to join, perhaps they could join us as well. Um, so Cabinet Secretary, if you're happy, we'll just, um, we've got a good number of questions to go through. I'll just kick off and um, pass them over to you for me. The first one is from uh, Louisa MacDonald, who's Chief Executive of Development Trust Association Scotland. Uh, and Louise asks, I wel she welcomes the new fund supporting towns and bids during the recovery. It's been very encouraging to see bids and development trusts working more closely together through this crisis. However, as many towns don't have bids, what will the government be doing to support town teams or trusts, etc., to help with recovery and renewable renewal, um, and perhaps building a pipeline of new bids and development trusts or community anchor organisations? Yeah, and I, I think that's the that's the the ethos behind trying to make sure that this bid this sorry this funding goes beyond it just being about bids. That was one of the things that when you you hosted a, a previous discussion, Peter, that yeah. some of the, the issues that cropped up that um, I think it was Dundee actually that had uh, made the point that they weren't quite at that stage yet to have a bid, but they still required a bit of support. And so that's exactly why we want to try and support towns beyond just the ones that have business improvement districts and um, and we want to make and I think the other thing that I think is important in that question though is that what we've seen is a closer working together of different organizations and uh, locally and uh, and aside from being the 
the cabinet secretary, I see that in my own constituency. We had to work hard around in one of the towns in Carluke to, to try to pull together. It had a bid, but it also had a development trust. It had other things going on. And, and the development trust has been one of those anchors that has managed to pull everything together so that we're not all seeing groups, whether it's the community council or the one of the youth groups or whatever, doing lots of different things, but not necessarily corralling around a single kind of vision and ambition for the town that, that, that now the energy is getting pulled together and everyone recognises each other's strengths um, and, and are working now collaboratively towards a, a shared ambition for the town. One of the discussions that I've had with some uh, organisations, in fact Lee was on that call, was a really good comment from uh, Sally Thomas from the Scottish Federation of Housing Associations and she, uh, I think, borrowed this phrase and I think that has to be the hallmark of how we approach things going forward. No egos, no logos, no silos. And I think that's a good way to approach that. We just drop all the things that have created problems in the past, barriers, and, and put that to the side, work together and work collaboratively. And you know that's the desire behind this funding is to get and reach beyond the bids, but also to improve the resilience and infrastructure of towns uh, as well, and to support them where they need that support so that they can um, continue to have a uh, success going forward. Fantastic, thank you. Um, next one is from, uh, is from Gillian McNamara, um, who's West Dumbartonshire Council and also Scottish Local Authorities Economic Development Group. Um, and Gillian asks, will, will Barnet consequentials arising from the UK government's reopening high streets safely fund um, in response to the COVID-19 outbreak be made available to support high streets and town centres, I suppose, in Scotland? Yeah, I don't think, unfortunately, we're going to be uh, benefiting from any consequentials on that because of the way that that funding has been routed. So that means that what we need to do then is, is work hard and make sure that the money that we have in Scotland that has, so whether that's been around the Sustrans money, the money that we've announced today, this building on the money that we've previously uh, allocated uh, for bids, building on the uh, regeneration work that's happening across the country to date, that we make sure that we maximise all that for the benefit of town centres. So, you know, that's why today is important. It's that that's money that's going in to directly support our town centres. And that's regardless of the uh, any lack of consequentials that we've had from the UK government. And my colleagues, uh, Kate, will always continue to press the UK government for, for the consequentials that we need it. But Unfortunately, that's not going to be the case for that funding. Um, and I think I see some of the questions as well. How do we scan through some of the questions? I think going forward, it's going to mean that we're going to need to be thinking more cleverly around how it's in housing or schools or capital projects that are happening. How do they work much more together to benefit the place that they're part of? And that's why the place principle is going to be important. It's going to be it's uh, necessary that we take that holistic picture and make sure that those, that funding that's going in, which is considerable, isn't just used up for one policy aim, but actually works together for the benefit of the communities. And that's why um, community wealth building, all those things that uh, Phil spoke about are going to be critical going forward uh, as well. Brilliant, fantastic. <clears throat> um, you refer to that uh to that previous conference call we had. And I think one of the, I think Barry McCulloch from the Federation of Small Businesses was on that call and he asks, um, the 50 million pound town centre boost fund has proven very popular. Will the Scottish government top up, oh, there's a direct request, will the Scottish government top up this fund? So at the moment, we're currently gathering a lot of the information and understanding from that work and, and that will enable us to make further future decisions going, going forward. Um, there's already been put into that some flexibility around deadlines to make sure that it's uh, not as tight as it I think had been. Um, but it's going to be important that we get the good evidence and knowledge and experience from that investment and then enable us to take the right decisions going forward. But again, again, I think it's going to mean that we have to look at that beyond just my portfolio or Kate Forbes's portfolio is going to mean that we're going to have to think more uh, collectively about how we deploy funding and how do we make sure that we get the most from the funding that we put 
put through, whether that's housing, whether that's through uh, school spend, or whether that's through directly um, uh, town centre funding, making sure again that we go back to that and ethos of place being the thing that governs some of that. And I should have said that some of, you know, you know, for by all the kind of funding that I've mentioned, you know, this is also on top of a lot of support to businesses today as well. So um, it's tricky times for government because we don't have a huge amount of money. And this is, you know, significantly impacted on our ability now to, to think through how we can support all the things that we need to support going forward. And this is not a constitutional point, but we don't have the powers to borrow in, uh, in a way that a government might usually respond to something like this. So again, it's going to require us to work through some of those challenges and maximise every single penny that we spend to benefit the communities that we serve. And that's why it's going to be, I think, important that when we come through this, that we, we think, think differently and use this as an opportunity to try and fast forward some of the things that we've been trying to, we've been scratching our head with for some time about how we get the place a based approach to kind of work and have traction. I think the time for that now is is here, and we need to build from what we've had, uh, and make sure that we don't uh, lose some of the the, the gains that we've had uh, to date. Fantastic, thank you very much. Um, we, an organisation you'll know well, I'm sure, Aberdeen Inspired, the, the Business Improvement District in Aberdeen, Adrian Watson's the Chief Executive, and Adrian asks, uh, will the Cabinet Secretary agree to look at extending the timeline within the Scottish Government COVID-19 emergency bill to allow a further extension around renewable da renewal dates? If this is not possible, uh, will she lobby for a four nations approach with UK and Welsh government to ensure we don't risk losing bids unnecessarily? Okay, so our advice has been that there's no scope to amend bids legislation in the current parliament from the UK government, but uh, we'll certainly take that point around taking a four, uh, discussing with the four, four nations about how we move this going forward. So that is a sensible, pragmatic, in fact, I know that my officials are already engaging with uh, devolved nations around around some of this uh, as well so we absolutely will do that and because we want to support bids and I think and I hope that because the government has already not just expressed that support through words but actually provided some support over this challenging period that 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 that, that is clear to see so um, we'll continue on that. Fantastic thank you very much and then we've got um Another one from the North East, we've got Audrey Meekie um, from Aberdeenshire Council Strategic Town Centre Executive. Um, and Audrey asks, will the Scottish Government be reviewing the Town Centre Action Plan based on the COVID-19 recovery? So I, I, think, um, I think there's a real opportunity now to, 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 to use this moment to think about the future of towns but not to rip up everything and start again, because I think the other thing is about having confidence in some of the things that we'd already been working on before. And I think that Town Centre Action Plan was, was pretty good work and pretty uh, solid. And I think now um, what we need to do, though, is use the kind of changed context that we find ourselves in uh, to, 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 to look at that afresh, to, to see what options and opportunities there are. But I'm conscious that in a many different parts of my portfolio area, that we already had some good policies and approaches in place, but what this situation has now enabled us to do is to try and fast forward some of that, whether that's in uh, homelessness and housing, or whether it's in this, that we've got solid base from which to be begin to think about our renewal work. And um, I definitely think the, the way in which it town centres, the, the, the themes that we're discussing today is very much in that space of social renewal and about how do we reimagine uh, our, the way our economies work? How do we make sure that, and I think, you know, I think one of these last discussions we pointed to was Lee's blog around um, that localism, the shorter supply chains, all of those things that are rethinking things around procurement, all those things that in North Ayrshire they're doing through their community wealth building approach that actually could help us uh, improve resilience, but also build back better, which is the phrase that I think we're all trying to coalesce around. So um, 
And that means as well that we need to work and continue to have this dialogue directly with uh, your members as well, because we don't want this to be done in, in a silo or a, or a ministerial tower. This has to be about using the experience of people across the country to help inform how we move it forward. But I think there's opportunity now to really take forward some of the thinking that had already been grounded within the, the plan. Maybe just bring Phil in at this point. I mean, Phil, I think, the, I think the lesson from the early stages of the COVID recovery are that it's those parts of the world, those towns and communities that are working together um, collaboratively are coming back, coming back with the most, I suppose, imaginative solutions and uh, best results, I suppose. Is that the experience so far? Yeah, I, I have to say one of the, the, the most positive things that have happened with COVID is people have just come together, all hands to the pump type attitude, really positive, you know, a, a, a real passion about the place that they belong to. Uh, so there's been much closer working between community groups, uh, local government, uh, business improvement districts, and that's a model that we had already been, you know, pushing. Cabinet Secretary mentioned the one car league approach. We've also got one Lynn Lithgow, which brings in a whole range of different players from the traders group, the bid, the community association, the development trust. And it's pulling all that together just to get a focus on the town to make sure we're not duplicating or replicating. Everybody has their role to play and it's all to achieve a bigger goal. The one, the one uh, call out that I would like to mention was Postle Park in North Glasgow. It's been getting a lot of media attention recently. Postle, as you know, is, is an area uh, just to the north of the city centre, which traditionally has struggled. You know, it's an area that sometimes has been overlooked. You've seen the West End getting nice and leafy, the south side growing, uh, East End got the games, and the north just seems to be a wee bit left behind. But these guys just rolled up their sleeves. North Glasgow Homes, as the registered social landlord, the anchor organisation, got the businesses around the table. That in turn got the police, the NHS, Scottish Canal, Scottish Enterprise, Glasgow City Council, the MSP for the area. And I have to say, the work that they've been doing mainly around vulnerable, you know, working with local authority around vulnerability, the, the recent refugees to the country, making sure they were supported, even right down to the level of the central mosque, making sure that the smaller groups of Muslim uh, uh, refugees from Syria were getting halal food delivered, etc. It's just been phenomenal. And the confidence that I've seen grown by this collaboration and the pride in their area, you know, it, it, it has been transformative. So this has definitely been a point in time where people are just genuinely looking to collaborate more. Yeah, I would agree. I see it in my own, my own con constituency as well. So there's um, different organisations just pulling together, rolling their sleeves up, getting on with it. And one area that we can point to, one um, policy area that we can point to that um, gives us a real sense of just how dramatic the change has been is in homelessness uh, and rough sleeping. So now we've got to a point where our intelligence tells us we've got about 30 people rough sleeping in Scotland. That's a huge, huge dramatic reduction because organisations have got together, rolled their sleeves up, focused in on the task in hand and protected some of the most marginalised people that were particularly at risk during this pandemic. And, you know, beforehand we were trying to work out how could we tackle this? We had some good plans in place, but this has given us the, 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 the drive and the focus. It's a, you know, sad that it takes a pandemic. However, we've got an opportunity now. So how do we move forward and keep some of the good positive things uh, in amongst the horrible side of COVID and the pandemic? How do we keep some of the good, good stuff and, and use that to build from? I, I suppose from, from a, a bit's perspective, what, one of the... Um, positives might be, you know, this spotlight that's been shone on business improvement districts gives them the opportunity to demonstrate their value and hopefully there will, there will be communities across Scotland who will think, actually, in the future, we want to go with a piece of this and perhaps yeah. express just in working together in the future. Yeah, and I, and I think, you know, if what Phil said there is really important around confidence. I hope that that is what's, and I think we're seeing that, a confidence in uh, ability, about a, a pride in their place and and a reconnection as well. Folk have had to stay at home and so they're going to their, their local towns, their local shops in a way that maybe sometimes folk had forgotten how to. So, um, but I don't want to kind of get too rose tinted in this because there's some significant challenge and difficulty. I had a, a, you know, a meeting this morning with a, 
an organisation that's thinking about redundancy. So I'm not going to rose tint this too much either because there's significant mm. challenge there ahead for people and significant uh, financial challenge facing a lot of people too. So, um, but that said, the positives are there and there's an opportunity. So we build from that, I think. Well, I'm, I for one am looking forward to finding my local hairdresser again because I've decided... <laughs> I've decided it's not something I can do myself any longer. I've decided. Um, that said, uh, I, wasn't, I wasn't asking for comment. Um, thank you very much for joining us, Cabinet Secretary. Um, can I perhaps just in, in, wind, in preparation to wind up, maybe pass back to Lee just for some uh, closing remarks from, from you, Professor Sparks? Peter, thank you for that. Um, I've got a few things I'd like to say if I possibly could. Could I start by, um, again, thanking the Cabinet Secretary for her attendance and support, uh, but also reiterate something Phil said. Thanks to Phil and the team and for all the people they've been working with across Scotland uh, for everything that's been going on. Um, I would like to start my remarks though with a bit of sad news. Um, many of you um, will have known Ian Davison Porter, um, and we were informed last week uh, that Ian sadly died towards the end of May. Um, Ian was really the founding father uh, of BIDS in Scotland. He shepherded the legislation in its development, um, the Pathfinder BIDS, and for the first 10 years drove BIDS um, through the Scottish uh, landscape. And really the legacy, um, I think, of what Ian did is shown by the way in which the bids have stepped up through this uh, this pandemic and the way in which uh, they've worked very closely together. Um, we talked about this at the board this morning. We will pass and have passed our, our sympathies to his family. Um, but I would like to pay tribute to what Ian did over probably about 15 years worth of work um, on, on bids within Scotland. Uh, in terms of some remarks for myself, if I may indulge it slightly, we are living in unprecedented times. Uh, there is a huge challenge uh, for many people and for many places. I'm sure everyone is trying to do the very best they can in what are very difficult circumstances. And undoubtedly, um, as the Cabinet Secretary just said, there will be choppy waters ahead, both for individuals and for particular places. However, I am somewhat cheered by a number of things. Um, we have seen remarkable resilience, remarkable uh, community engagement and transformation over the last three months. And I think we have shown what can be done and what can be done quickly. Things that were thought of as very difficult have altered very rapidly as a consequence. And we need to hang on uh, and really take the best of those in terms of what we're doing. We also need to pause and reflect, however, uh, what do we value about towns and places and why do we value them? Um, there's an awful lot of mantra at the minute about open up, opening up the economy and that's fully understandable. Uh, but that's one thing, but we have to reflect that the economy we had wasn't perfect before. Uh, we need to recover, undoubtedly, but we need to rethink and repurpose uh, by any of the things that we do, hence the things I tried to put forward on the blog, which you can get through STP's website. And COVID, no doubt, has highlighted the inequalities that perhaps were glossed over before. You know, if we take something like the place principle, we were getting there. Um, now we need to accelerate that to make sure that we don't leave people behind, that we do build back better in the right ways. Um, and as a result, um, we do need to think not just about economic renewal, but we need to think about social renewal and social rethinking as well. And that's why I was pleased to accept the invitation of the Cabinet Secretaries uh, to join the advisory board about social renewal and put place into that discussion in many ways. One of the reasons I was pleased to do that um, is because I'm absolutely certain uh, that towns are ideally placed to be at the heart of that recovery. Um, and I think we've got a good future, albeit a different future than what we might have been thinking about a little while ago. And STP and all of the people around this table have an enormous amount to give and to play in reshaping the social and the economic. So thank you all for
Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Lee. Um, that's uh, for some very prescient remarks there about the way in which uh, town centres can be at the heart of the recovery to come. That brings us to the end of the session. Um, can I thank Lee for his remarks and, and for chairing the AGM so ably? Um, can I thank uh, Phil Prentice for his continuing work to put STP at the forefront of fighting for Scotland's towns? And can I thank especially the Cabinet Secretary, uh, Aileen Campbell, MSP, for taking us uh, taking time uh, to join us today um, at a time that it will be unprecedented in its busyness in terms of the task in front of the Scottish Government and what's got to be done in such a short period. We really appreciate you joining us uh, today, Minister. Um, we've, we've, we've tackled some of your questions. There have been a whole number of questions, more than, more than we could have dealt with today. So what, what we're going to do is we'll endeavour to produce um, our Q&A document, um, particularly based on the announcement the Cabinet Secretary has made today, and we'll put that on the, the, the STP website and point to it through our social media channels, and hopefully um, we'll answer those questions that you've posed that we've not managed uh, to get to. First, uh, thank you all for attending. Um, I, I'm sorry there were no cakes this year. Uh, Phil, <laughs> promises, Phil promises that next year there will be cakes. Um, and in the meantime, thank you, thank you for all you're doing in supporting the organisation across Scotland. Thanks for attending and keep your eye on the STP website for further information, particularly about the Cabinet Secretary's uh, announcement today. Thank you very much and good afternoon.